Welcome to Sports Central on Athletic Television. My name is Praise Alunge, and we have a lot for you on the show. Of course, on the show, Amajo Melvin Pinnick, NFF president, says he would not interfere when it comes to the election in September 2022. And also in the package, Alex Iwobi playing very well for Everton. And one man is praising him for his performances. Not forgetting as well, the UEFA Champions League, the biggest club competition in the world. Guess what? The big teams are failing. And we go to Stamford Bridge also on the show. US Open and also boxing. Stay with us. And it's a delight once again to have you if you're just joining. Well, this is Atlantic Television and Sports Central is here. Praise Alunga is my name. And guess what? I've got a sport analyst with me on the show at this time. His name is Emmanuel Onyeje. Good to have you, Emmanuel. Thank you so much, Chris. It's good to be here. How are you? Doing very well. Are you justified? Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> not. <laughs> All right. Uh, of course, uh, we together we are going to be taking some of the stories I've shared with you. So just um, straight to Amadou Melvin Pinnick. Uh, saying he would not interfere with the election built for September uh, in Benin City, we hope for. He is the NFF president. Um, when the word interfere is used yeah. by the president of the Nigerian Football Federation, yeah. what does that mean? Uh, basically, um, he won't interrupt the process that should lead to a credible election and also should, um, of course, uh, bring about the right leader for the NFF going forward. I do think his administration hasn't really been the best uh, we've had in recent times. A couple of other administrations that uh, brought about success for our football. But then I do think since his, the inception of his administration, Nigerian football has regressed by, should I say, 20 years. Oh, uh, because, really? Yeah, because, I mean, Why? for instance, the uh, MPFL, was on TV when he came on, I think. Um, the MPFL, the, the progress was massive. And then he came in, you could say, yes, there's the LMC that is also in charge of the MPL, uh, MPFL, but generally it's football. And I don't think the MPFL has been, um, has been what it used to be in the past. And the followership has dropped drastically as well. So when you look at all of that, you look at the fact that Nigeria didn't make it to the World Cup, you could say that we won all that mini tournament and you could also say that the ladies made it to the World Cup. But that being said, um, when you look at our football within the period they've been in power, you could say that there's not so much to be happy for. Um, yeah, we won the under-17 World Cup in 2015. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I think it and was that in was, charge then. Of course, that was under his administration. That was under his administration. But then, since then, what have we done? have we done um, the best came in 2019 when we picked bronze at uh, the afcon i think yeah, yeah that was yeah, in egypt 2019, 2019. Yes. after that uh, a crash uh, at the, at the round of 16. 16 and then also the the oh, the whole bruha that happened with the under 20 women that went to costa rica and somehow they were abandoned in an airport so loads of stories the um uh, what was it called mushu dabula national stadium that was uh, renovated and all the oh, whole drama. Come on. It, no, his administration but, but, has been mad with loads of now, inconsistency. Now, this is what Amadjo Melvin Pinnick said about his administration. Mm -hmm. For him, it's not about qualifying at that top level. Yes, we missed out, but he said people forgot the fact that in Africa, you can not mention three countries that have under 17, under 20, the main team, both for the men and the women's team, participating in WAFU tournaments, that's regional tournaments, um, the African Cup of Nations for both the men and the women, and also even participating in the World Cup qualifiers. I, but, I mean, that was his, he was in Lagos. Priest. He was in Lagos yeah. for the annual general meeting, and he was showing his scorecard to the people. And for him, he's disappointed that a lot of people are saying his administration hasn't done really well. And for him, he listed those points. Don't you think those points are justifiable? No, they're not, actually. Because if you need to list your scorecards yourself, then you're not doing well. Um, I, I don't. I, I, I do think so that... So we should come and list it for him, right? If, no, if, he, if, he, if you need to do that yourself, you're not oh. doing well. Because I do think qualification for all of those age grade tournaments has been something Nigeria has been doing over time. Oh, yeah. Yes, and so to now descend to the point where achieving that becomes a success for an administration, it, it goes a long way in telling how that the administration has been for our football. It's like a team that used to be playing in the Champions League final, win the Champions League, settling for the Carabao Cup. 
I it's see. just it. It's, it's not progress. Liverpool comes to mind. But anyway, do you agree with Amadio Melvin Pinnick at this point that his administration has done so well for Nigerian football? Or are you with Emmanuel on this? Like, come on, these guys are taking us 20 years backward. All you need to do is just go to our social media platform, like I always mention. Make sure you follow our social media platform and then drop your comment on the comment box. Don't forget, you stand a chance. Yes after the month to win a top up you have to get that done uh, well but he said it's not going to interfere so you it shouldn't uh, as a start you, you already rate him no low. on a scale of 10 is three so he should not interfere at all yeah you should not but interfere let me just ask you this before we go to the next story what what is your idea or an ideal that's the word now mm -hmm. an ideal nff president in in a very short um Okay, words. one that will galvanize our football, okay. invest heavily on grassroots football and grassroots coaching, integrate um, the school system into football and see how he can work with the Ministry of Education in order to catch young talent because they are abundant in Nigeria. We are over 200 million people. We should not be failing to qualify to the World Cup against a country with under 50 million people. It doesn't make sense. Mm. Anyway, the elective Congress will be held September 30 in Benin City. And we have to wait for that to decide the next NFF president. Also, you can add your voice, your ideal NFF president. Let us know as we go straight to our social media handle. Uh, we'll move away from the NFF story and go to another Nigerian star. This time around, Alex Iwobi. It's like he's playing very well for his club side and there's been a huge pundit of praise over his performances. I saw him at the weekend mm. against Liverpool. He it was, was everywhere. Yeah. And someone said we missed him when Nigeria played against Ghana. Absolutely. You know, for the World Cup mm -hmm. qualifiers mm -hmm. in March. Because yes. he got a red card in the AFCON. Yeah. Um, you know, and that was what also led to Nigeria losing to Tunisia. Absolutely. And then he missed the World Cup qualifiers. But it's a different thing. We've seen Nigerian players playing very well for their club side. Mm -hmm. We've seen club managers managing the way our players play. Mm -hmm. But when they come to the national team, it's a different ballgame mentality. Yeah. We don't get to see how to ignite those spirit. Do you see Alexi Wobi now coming to the Super Eagles of Nigeria and performing the magic we are seeing in Everton? Now? It's possible, but then I think that thing is a recurring factor in most national teams. You look at the English squad of 2006 and 2005, they also did poorly, but they had the likes of Paul Scholes, Steven Gerrard, Frank Lampard and all of that and in their prime basically, but then they still didn't go on to win the World Cup when you look at that. So I think it's a problem that happens frequently with national team sides because of course they don't spend so many so much time together you spend so much time with your club side teammates more than you do with your national teammates so the synergy will always be there for the club side but it takes a special coach to bring out the best in a team of players from different ideologies and ethos right let, i think that's a problem with alexi when it comes to the national team but i, I still think it's fundamental it's good okay let, let me take it from that point you said it takes an extraordinary coach yes. That leads me to Jose Pissero is the coach of the team. Is he an extraordinary coach that can bring the best from Alexi Wobi? I don't know about extraordinary, but I think he's a step uh, a step up um, towards improving what we had before, which was Austin and Gwavon. Okay. Yeah, I think... A step up? I think it's a step up, because I think uh, Austin and Gwavon is a C-minus coach. Uh, oh, in my grading thing, he's a C-minus <laughs> coach. But, but I think I would give uh, Pissero a C-plus. Mm. So that's a step up, actually. But do I think he can bring, he the, can best bring the best out of this lad? Alex Iwobi from Alex Iwobi? Um, I, I'm yet to really see what Pacero's ethos is like. I, I don't know. Because if it's going to be a midfield based position uh, domination and all of those things, I think Alex Iwobi has a key role to play because he's a creative spark, park, uh, yeah, spark in the middle of the park for whether Everton or Nigeria. And I think he's got a lot to do. So. I do not know. I need to watch Pacero for a couple oh, of games yeah, to not know too many what games, he's actually. all about because we don't know what he's all about for now. Mm -hmm. I think because of the introduction of Calvin Bassi and how he's played him, I think he's one that wants his wing backs and everywhere to be to support the attack and all that. So if that is the case, I think he's an attacking coach. But yet in that middle of the pack, um, I don't know. I, I'm yet to see what he he can do with um, uh, Alexi Ward. And just to talk about Jose Pissero, I mean, we checked his stats when NFF gave him to Nigeria. Yeah, and he's one coach that has scored 
led him to score many goals mm. and also considered many goals. So, Pizarro can score 57 goals and concede as high as 51. Mm. Is that good in scoring and also considering? Mm, that's so not good it's enough. A, well, because it's a good defensive record wins you titles, titles but. Goals. Not attacking plays can win new games, but not titles. But again, well, it's coming to Nigeria. We haven't seen too much of his games. Hopefully, we have a game later in September also, before the end of this year. Uh, before the end of this month, I beg to say, I think 27 in Oman, mm -hmm. when Nigeria will play against the Dexter Foxes. Uh, then we would see the best of uh, Joseph Pissero. Maybe uh, it's a test game. Both Nigeria and Nigeria will not be at the World Cup. So it's, it's like two, two countries that will not be in Qatar trying to test their strength. But just to put things straight, still talking about Lex Iwobi, former Arsenal forward in person of Iron Wright, believes Arsenal needs someone like Alex Iwobi at the Emirates Stadium. Uh, I don't know if that, that's correct. Do you agree? Yes or no? Just a yes or no answer. Um, I think they do actually, but... If, he left Arsenal after all. <laughs> if I mean his shoes, I won't return, um, I, I think. Because Arsenal won is a big side. The responsibilities are on your shoulder. Loads of expectations. You don't want to be doing that every day. An average side like Everton takes too much pressure off your shoulders. You can go and play your game and do whatever you want to do. And then people see you for who you are truly. But I think when he left Arsenal, it was okay to leave Arsenal at that point. And he wouldn't share loads of the responsibilities, right? And if he was still at Arsenal, probably he would be on the bench. But he left Arsenal and it's for his own, for his own good. I think he's a, he's a very brilliant player. And he can play in the Arsenal team right now. But don't go back. Mm, that's Emmanuel to Alexei will be. I hope you are his cousin. Maybe he will just listen to you. Now we we'll go for another break. And when we come back, we we'll go to the big night. Yes, it's for the night. They call it the champions. And that is the UEFA Champions League where Napoli demolished, I won't mention the team, until we come back. And guess what? Our Nigerian star was not in action. But again, they were able to get the job done. Not forgetting as well, other results. Please stay with us. Still Sports Central on Atlantic Television. Praise Alunge with Emmanuel Onyinje here. Of course, he's my sports analyst for the show at this time. Now, we spoke about NFF earlier, if you missed it, and also Alex Iwobi and how he can fit in into the Super Eagles of Nigeria. But straight away to the UEFA Champions League. What a night of action. It's a night for the best of teams. I mean, yeah. Emmanuel. Which of the results before I list, I wrote them out yeah. for you was your peak? Yes. Personally, I would say the Atletico Porto game. Um, if that was a movie, had a sumptuous <laughs> climax. <laughs> and I tell you, how do you score three goals in nine minutes? I mean, at the point at, it was goalless. Like, it was goalless <laughs> to the point that everybody expected that that would be a goalless draw. But three goals in nine minutes is orgasmic. If I'm <laughs> allowed to use that. And and so and and I mean. Fixtures like that, Porto Atletico comes with its drama and it didn't disappoint yesterday. Um, also, good goal from, uh, uh, what was his name, Griezmann. The Frenchman has been struggling at Atletico yeah. because of, I mean, the, the, the closing his contract. I expect him to play within a few minutes and all of that. But he came on to deliver the team at the, I think, wee hours of the game. And it was an incredible one. I know everybody will say, oh, the Porto, Nap the Napoli, Liverpool result. But I, I don't rate Liverpool this season. I think they will struggle to finish in the top four. I think they were going to struggle a lot against teams that are um, that are well organized, and Napoli is a well organized side. Mm. So, just looking at the result, another big one was Lewandowski. You you just cannot take anything away from his yeah. experience on a hat trick, yeah. uh, you know, for Barca. We'll get to that. Ayers beat Rangers, four goals to nil. Entrant Frankfurt lost at home to Sporting CP. It ended Entrant Frankfurt nil, Sporting CP three. Napoli demolished Liverpool. Liverpool fans would not want me to mention this, but it is what it is. It ended Napoli 4, Liverpool 1. And Emmanuel has mentioned the other results, and that is Atletico Madrid beating FC Porto by two goals to one. Not forgetting Club Bridge, they won 1 0 against Bayer Leverkusen and Barcelona 5. Victoria Pleasant 1. It's like, welcome to the UEFA Champions League from Barca. <laughs> and Inter Milan, that's another big game, I yeah, thought. Mm. Inter Milan nil, Bayern Munich too. I mean, Bayern will always be Bayern. Uh, and, and then Tottenham also better than Marcel. They won by two goals to nil. So these are the results. Uh, Barca against uh, Victoria Pleasant, Lewandowski on a hard trick, bringing the form from 
you know, the Bulgarian mm. into a, another a, a side, uh, the Bavarian to yeah, the Bulgarian. Yeah, yeah. Something really massive. Absolutely. Like they say, um, form is temporary, class is permanent. I mean, His class is permanent. And and for those who said, oh, he's in, in the German uh, Bundesliga and the competition is not massive, he only gets to play against RB Leipzig, Dortmund and a few other teams. And then he just goes on to slaughter the rest of the teams um, in the Bundesliga. Now, people can now say that. Um, but even at that, so he was doing well in the Champions League. But now he's at Barca and he's the same person, he's the same form, he's the same turning, he's the same productivity level. So it goes to show that this guy is class and you see his type once in a while. And so, uh, you look at him, maybe the next person that comes to mind, I mean, basically a reincarnation of him would be Haaland, but I know we are going into that later. But I think he's an excellent player. Everybody expected Barca to win Victoria Plays. I mean, yeah, they are not yeah, made. Yeah. So get the goal self should be a thing of joy for I, them. I, because exactly. I mean, you don't I, go to Camp Nou and, and, and get results. Not many, not, many, not many teams go there. Maybe Spain. why people would not rate Lewandowski's hat-trick because it's against Victoria Plays and, and it was at Camp Nou anyway. But just going back <laughs> to the results on Tuesday quickly. Maybe you missed um, the results. Well, Dynamo Zagreb on Tuesday night. Uh, edged Chelsea 1-0. That was what cost Thomas Tuchel his job. By the way, if you don't know, he has been sacked. Salzburg 1, AC Milan 1, Dortmund 3, Copenhagen 0, Celtic 0, Real Madrid 3, and then Leipzig 1, Shakhtar the next 4, Sevilla 0, Manchester City 4, Paris Saint-Germain 2, Juventus 1, Benfica 2, Maccabi Lafa of Israel 0. From the match they won, mm. Tuesday and Wednesday night, just your thoughts on can we start talking about who is likely to, to win the UEFA Champions League this season? Maybe too early. Uh, yeah, maybe too early. But then you, the you want, yeah, but you want to throw, you want to throw Manchester City in the mix. Mm. I mean, look at what they are doing with Erling Haaland, and look at Alvarez as well. You look at the quality and talent um, at the Etihad this season, and you just marvel. They've got loads of talent, and to let to have the audacity to let Sterling and Gabriel Jesus leave in the same transfer window, not just to any other team, to teams in the Premier League, to their rivals, shows they don't care. They don't care. It shows how much audacity they've got and what they believe they can do with Erling Haaland. So I think you want to throw in City there and you also want to throw in the re the people their middle name should be the Champions League <laughs> Real Madrid, Real Madrid. Into the I mean because well. they struggled against e Celtic e but at the end exactly they just um, exactly the thing is that with Madrid you can and never the round the, write them out. Mm. They they got goals in every leg on the pitch. I get it. Whether at the defense to the midfield to the attack they've got goals and everywhere. They've got experience and also, they've so. got players that can improvise at every given point in time. Look at the goal Modric took scoring with the outside of the boot. I mean he's the best football player that can do anything with the outside of his boot. He scored that brilliant goal. And then Haaland, um, what's his name? Um, the guy that came from Chelsea, um, Hazard. Okay. Hazard that everybody wrote up also came into score. So, Rhea has got goals in them. They've got the belief. They feel this is their competition and they, they are just they, dominating. They, they, they are just dominating. So, you can't write them out. So, there's City in the mix. And there is Real Madrid. There is Real. If Liverpool, that, that. that's just it. Two. That's just it. <laughs> and tonight, well, the, there's one they call the Potter Potter football. <laughs> 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 and that is the UEFA Europa League. Yes, that's what we call it. So, uh, <laughs> Emmanuel won't like this, but don't worry. <laughs> Zurich tonight will take on Arsenal in the UEFA um, Europa League game by 7.45. PSV will take on uh, Bodo Glimt. Eike Lakana against Rene tonight as well, 7.45. Fenerbahce against Dynamo Kiev. Ludo Goret against AS Roma. Joseph Mourinho's side will be in action. HJK against uh, Ria Betis. Malmo FF Braga. Junior Berlin St. Gilius tonight. Lazio against Feyenoord. Those games will be by 8 o'clock. Uh, Stones against Michelin. Manchester United up against Real Sociedad and the game is scheduled for 8 o'clock at Old Trafford. Omonia Nicosia against Sheriff, Nantes against Olympiacos, uh, Karabag will travel to Germany to face Freiburg, Stan, uh, Red Star Belgrade, Red Star Belgrade against AS Monaco and Ferem Faros against Transaspor. So we we'll focus on two games tonight okay. and that's Manchester United against Real Sociedad by 8 o'clock and then uh, we'll talk quickly about Zurich against Arsenal. Mm. Um, Zurich against Arsenal. Arsenal, yet yeah. doesn't yeah, matter what happens. My yeah. United stopped them. At yeah, the because weekend, United it's traveling to Zurich just quickly. Yeah, uh, because of time. Can Arsenal get maximum points? We saw Chelsea travel to Dynamo Zagreb mm. and they lost. Can mm. Arsenal hold for? I, I think they can actually. Arsenal is a good side. Um, it's a good side. But if 
Um, it just depends on how what kind of game Zurich brings um, today. But I do think that Arsenal has got what it takes to beat them. Um, I know the defeat on Sunday doesn't really help with respect to their morale and all of that. But then I think Zurich is a place they can go to get a result. Manchester United, they will sit at home. Good game against Arsenal, against Real Sociedad. They should consolidate, you expect. I, you expect them to consolidate, of course, and that would be a good thing. But then United against... Uh, Spanish opposition is a tricky one. Um, it's usually no, but I know United has won this uh, kind of this fixture. I think last two seasons in the Europa League ended for the uh, aggregate in favor of Manchester United. Hopefully, there's a repeat of that today. But then I know that Spanish opposition is usually a tough one for Manchester United, and just let's see how they will skate through. Mm, okay. And why am I play today, though? Then? Huh? Now, why am I play today? Because I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah, United has got a game against Crystal Captain Palace. Maguire. <laughs> United has got a game against Crystal Palace. This weekend, okay. and also, um, I think he might want to rest with Sandro Martinez, who has been a brilliant addition to the team. Um, I do think that he might just opt for Maguire and Lindelof, which um, a lot of Manchester United fans will be we <laughs> we shake their heads at. But then that has to be done. Uh, well, Maguire might just give a a what's the word? Now, might just give an incredible performance. Come on, uh, you never can tell. My United fans have faith in your Maguire. <laughs> All right, away from Champions League and, of course, the UEFA Europa League. Quickly to Chelsea. The news is not that Thomas Tuchel has been sacked. I mean, he was sacked. That's, that's not the news. Now, the news is Chelsea have reached a verbal agreement with Brighton manager Graham Porter to replace Thomas Tuchel as their next coach. Is that the right way Chelsea should have gone? No. Nah, bad move for me. Why? Um, the reason is this. Yeah, it takes a lot to move from an average team where the expectations are not as massive as what you have at Chelsea to go into Stamford Bridge from the Amex Stadium um, to play Champions League football, to have, to finish in the top four. Uh, you've not finished really. It, it's another thing to coach average players that just want to get up there and to coach world-class players that have seen it all. So, and the level of respect. How are you going to command that? So, I think it's going... It's I, I, Graham Potter is a good coach. But I think this move is too early for him. Um, I do think that the right choice would have been a Zinedine Zidane because he's been there, he's coached Real, he's won with them, he's experienced, he's a football icon. I think coming into that Chelsea side will I kind of leave the spirit of the boys. But Graham Potter, Brighton to Chelsea, bad move. I do feel he's a decent lad as a coach. He's, 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 with average teams, he's got it, but I just don't think that at Chelsea he's going to court it. Mm. And let me also ask you, as you watch, good decision you think, allowing Thomas Tuchel to leave. Do you think Chelsea did the right decision, uh, made the right decision? Was that the best of decision, allowing Thomas Tuchel to leave at this time? What do you think, Ugly Emmanuel? Um, I, I think it was, it, but Ch that's the culture at Chelsea, whether they change ownership or not. I think that's the culture, that's the ethos of the club. Um, football is a result-oriented business. If you're not delivering, you're let go. But I think but it just was too early. Ago, he won yeah, the exactly. It was too early. I, I think that's cruel, UEFA actually. Super Cup. It was too early. It was too, too early. You don't do that to a coach. It's one year the, the Super and Cup. And he lost two finals, you, though, even last exactly, season. Exactly. On penalties, penalties. On penalties. And he should have won those finals because if not for the lack of excellence from his forward players, yeah. the likes of Pulisic and the likes of uh, Romelu Lukaku, Lukaku. Yeah, yeah. they should be winning Liverpool in both finals. I mean... The, Penalty luck could go to anybody. Exactly. So I don't think I, I personally think Chelsea had a better season to Liverpool. Forget they finish in the, uh, they played in the Champions League final. I think the Liverpool. I quite agree. I, I, I think the bad. Liverpool side last season were yeah, really poor. It was just an improvement from the previous two seasons where they finish, find a way to finish third or fourth. But I do think that if Chelsea had gone on to win those two league cups, Liverpool had, would have finished a season without a trophy, only second to Manchester City. So so do you say because Chelsea played in two finals, lost the penalties, they didn't win? The Carabao Cup and the FA Cup. I, I think so it was just based season. on the beginning of the season, it, and even at that, it, exactly. So I don't games. think I just feel that a lot of things are just going on at the club right now. The structure has changed, the management has changed, and everything. So it's affecting Chelsea. I think this was the time the club should have stood with Thomas Tuchel because he came in and, and just lifted their spirit from the calamity of Lamp Frank Lampard. Mm. And to now fire him after giving you success for me just doesn't add up. Um, but, but like you said, it's football and yeah. the game is fired result. and, and being hired. Yeah. It's just it's, result it's oriented. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, we go for our final break on the show. And when we return, the US Open, that is the fourth Grand Slam of the year. Who exactly has progressed after this? Well, you've missed a lot if you just joined it, but not to worry. The final story on the show is also something that will lead to you, and it's US Open. Once again, a welcome 
um, to Atlantic Television and this is Sports Central. Praise and Emmanuel here in the studio. And straight to US Open, let's tell you, World number one, Iger Swatek, continues her bid for a second Grand Slam of the season as part of Thursday game in the US Open Women's semi-final lineup. French Open champion Swatek will take on Anand Sebalenka, who is searching for a first title after reaching, reaching the last four last year. Wimbledon runners up also on Jabriol will take on the informed Carolyn Garcia in the first semi final later this evening. Now, France Garcia is on a 13 match winning streak, having come through qualifying to clinch the Cincinnati Open title in the build up to the Flushing Meadows. But Jabriol leads head to head and now 2 0. That's what we look forward to later this evening. And finally, still talking about flushing meadows, Spanish teenager in person of Carlos Alcaraz reached his first major semi final after beating Italy Yannick Sina in US Open trailer, which ended a record latest time of 2.50 in New York. Now, Alcaraz, just 19, saved the match point before clinching an epic 6 3. 6-7, win over 7-5, 6-3 win over 11-6 Sena. Whoa, that's a long one. And the third seed now will face France Tafel on Friday for a sport in Sunday's final. Who will take it at the end? Well, that's the size of the show for today. It's a delight to have you, man. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. Thank you Thank for you. coming. Thank you. And don't forget, just go to our social media our platform, react to all our comments, we've asked the questions, and you start a chance to get something out of it. You don't want to miss it. And don't just like, share also, share the content, and follow us on Atlantic Television. And praise is Emmanuel. Have a wonderful time.